Hello, welcome to Prejain Technologies. I'm Venkat. This is part 25. In this session, we will learn what method overloading is in C Sharp. Let's look at an example. So, let's say, for example, I already have a function called public void add. And I want to add two numbers. So, we'll have int first number and second number. And all this method does is add those numbers and print the sum. So console.write line sum is equal to whatever we want to print. And then basically first number plus second number add them together and print the sum. Okay. So I have a function with name add. So let's say I want to have another function with the same name. Is that possible? Absolutely. But the function has to differ in the number and or type of parameters. Look at this. Right now, if I go ahead and compile this, then we'll get a compile error because these two functions have the same name and they have the same number of parameters. So when I say add, uh, let's make this method static so we can call that without creating an object. So let's make this static as well. So if I call add, now which one of these functions it should call? So we'll have a problem. That's why if you want to overload a function, then probably what I can do is I want to have another function that can add, you know, three numbers. So in this case, we are overloading these two functions you know, with a different number of parameters. So it's possible to overload a function based on the number of parameters. So if I go ahead and say add now, you will see that there are two versions of this add method. One, the first version is taking two numbers, whereas the second version is taking three numbers. So functions can be overloaded on the number of parameters. Okay, I can overload another function. Let's say, for example, I want to have I want to add four different integers, maybe int fourth number, okay, something like this, fourth number. Okay, now if you go ahead and try to call this add method, obviously it will show three variations of that add method, one which takes two parameters, the other one which takes three, and the final one which takes four. Okay, so basically we can overload a function based on the number of parameters. Okay, but on the other hand, let's say I want to add two numbers, but this time I want to add, you know, two floats rather than two integers. Can I do that with the same method? Absolutely. Float first number, float second number. Now if you look at this, these methods, they have the same name but they have different types of parameters. Here, it's an integer data type parameters, and in the second, if we have float data type parameters. So, methods can also be overloaded based on the type of parameters. Look at this, there are two variations, one which takes float data types, and the other one which takes integer data types. I can have another method as well. Let's say, maybe one takes a float, or integer and the other one takes a float. Can we do this? Absolutely. Okay, so somewhere we are missing something. Okay, that could be because of that. So let's compile that. Build succeeded. Now if I go ahead and call add, look at this, I have three add methods. Okay, one which takes two floats, one which takes an integer and a float, and the other one which takes two integers. Okay, so a method can be overloaded based on the number and type of parameters. Okay, a method can also be overloaded based on the kind of parameters. Okay, so what do you mean by kind? You know, in part 17, we have seen different method parameters, output, reference, uh, value and parameter arrays. Okay, these are called the different kinds of parameters. So it is also possible to overload a method based on different kinds of parameters. For example, here I have a method which takes, let's say, three integers into third number. Okay, now I, I want to overload this method, you know, I want to have another method which takes 
three parameters but this time this one the third parameter is going to be you know maybe an output type of parameter okay and first number plus second number and obviously if you, you can give it a meaningful name instead of saying third number since we are using this third parameter to hold the sum of these two numbers I will call it sum so this is an output parameter as I told you, if you're not sure about different kinds of parameters, I strongly encourage you to look at video part 17 in the series. So now, if you look at these two add methods, they have exact number of parameters, and they are the same type, all of them integers. But the kind of parameters, this is a value parameter, I mean, and this is an output parameter. Okay, so now if I go ahead and say add, it will show me two variations, one which takes all integer value parameters and the other one which takes two value parameters and one output parameter. So it is also possible to overload a function based on the kind of parameter. So if we go back to the presentation, so function overloading and method overloading, these terms, they are used interchangeably interchangeably they mean they mean one and the same method overloading allows a class to have multiple method names with the same name but with a different signature that's what we have seen in the example so far so in C sharp if functions can basically be overloaded on the number type and kind of parameters okay now uh, the signature of the method okay so in short we can say you know C sharp allows uh, method overloading basically in C sharp allows to have multiple methods with the same name but with a different signature. If you look at the definition, that's what the definition says. What do we mean by the signature of a method? Basically, the signature of the method, you know, forms the name of the method, the type of the parameter, number, and kind of parameters so that's what the signature of the method consists of so if you look at the sli slide the signature of the method consists of the name of the method the type kind and the number of its formal parameters but however we have to keep in mind the signature of the method does not include the written type and the params modifier so the written type of the method does not form the signature okay it's only the name type kind and number okay these form the signature of the method the written type and params keyword we know that there are four different kinds of parameters in c sharp value reference output and parameter arrays you know we know that we can overload a function based on the different based on different kinds of parameters but you cannot overload a function just based on the params keyword we'll let we'll look at an example First, let's see if we can overload a function based on just the written type of a function. If you look at this function, the written type of this function is void. But let me go ahead and say the written type here instead of void. Let's put int as the written type. Now, and then obviously we have to add a third number here. And just to make the function complete, third number here. And then maybe we'll just say return first number plus second number plus third number because the written type of this function is integer. Okay, now if you look at this, if I go ahead and build this, now the difference between these two functions is just the written type. And we know that the written type of a function does not form the method signature. Okay, so now if I go ahead and build this, I will get a compiler error already defines you know the program class already defines a member called add with the same parameter types okay so we get a compilation error so it's not possible to overload a function just based on the written type and it is also not possible to overload a function just based on the params keyword let's see what do we mean by that let's say for example you know I have a function and this one takes the params keyword and since params is a parameter arrays I'm going to pass this parameter arrays here and we will not basically do anything with that parameter okay now let's say that's an integer array you know 
the first parameter is integer data type integer integer and this one a parameters array and similarly I'm gonna have another function but it's not going to be params keyword but instead just a regular integer array now if I go ahead and build this look at this the program type program already defines a member called add with the same parameter types here the parameter type is an integer array here the parameter type is an integer array and these two are integers these two are integers the only difference between these two methods is this method has a params keyword but this doesn't have so it's not possible to overload methods just based on the params keyword so that's what the slide says the signature of a method basically consists of the name of the method and the type, kind, and the number of its formal parameters. The signature of the method does not include the written type and the params modifier, so it's not possible to overload a function just based on the written type or params modifier. Okay, so that's basically function or method overloading. In this slide, you can see in you know, our resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.